I'm Johnny Smith. I'm Richard Porter. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. When was the last time that you saw He-Man's hair? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'm well, asking this because I saw his hair a few days ago for the first time in for the first time I in decades. Can picture it? Am I remembering correctly? It's blonde, and it is in fact. Now, what would the style be? It's a bob. It's really, a bob. It? A Harley it's, bob. <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks like he might be does he sort of a little bit it's because it's i was gonna say it's not it's not really a bowl it's not so he doesn't look like he could be in the mike flowers pops or something it's more it's like a, it's a bowly bob it's yeah a, it's a bowly bob it's a carnaby street in the swinging 60s but yes, he's also just that's what sort it is of been to club gay as well in the maybe the late 80s is his hair in any way similar to that of Velma from Scooby Doo? Yeah, I think it's almost identical hair. Yeah, in well, fact, I feel they, like it they've is. got interchangeable hair. But he's also remember he's a he's fundamentally a bodybuilder as well. Yes, and oh, he's on the roids, isn't he? There's no doubt that he's, on he's a very softly spoken roided roidy guy. And then, <laughs> and then, of course, what happens was. Because I didn't really watch He Man. I think I was a little old for it, I, or maybe I just thought it was stupid. I can't really remember. But mm. what I but what I did remember, and I looked it up, was: Do you remember the intro? And this is not car related at all. I'm really sorry. Oh, uh, because I if you remember, you he, didn't, he didn't drive a car. He had a cat instead. <laughs> a cat. He used to drive a cat. <laughs> what was the cat called? It was called so. Cringer when it was. Um, in a in normal form, and then when he force uh, yeah. fed it roids, it became Battle yeah. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> now was it was it a, was it a tiger when it had I, been force fed the roids? I think it was. It became Tiger Spec. So it basically yeah. what happened it absolutely, was absolutely. I just like shoved he, a bottle of Huel into its mouth and made it drink. The he lots. laced its he laced its dinner with something that was exceptionally energetic. <laughs> Banned and, by athletics. <laughs> and he made he basically had a stage three tuned cat. Mm. That's what it was. So it went from cringer. So then I, out of pure Wait curiosity, a second. Who, it, wasn't there a creature that used to go snarf a lot? Was that cringer? No, you're. I think that was um, was Thundercats. That oh, I think you're getting yes, it mixed up with Thundercats. Pardon. I am. I'm mixing up. It's my obviously cat slogan. related, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, go on. Thundercats. Um, mm. So then I thought, I remember the intro being quite cringeworthy. Mm. So I looked it up. Mm. And so will you allow me to just just quote a, some, some intro words here? Yes. Okay. Let, <clears throat> here we go. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia, <laughs> defender of the secrets of Castle Greyskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secrets were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and I said, By the power of Greyskull, I have the power. <laughs> Cringer then became the mighty battle cat and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the Sorceress, Man-at-Arms and also Orko. Together, we defend Castle Greyskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. OK, so Why there's a lot to unpack. <laughs> Why are they defending the castle? I mean, it's his house, right? He lives there. Or does he not live there? He just defends it. No, it, it is his house. He's either the security guard who lives in-house yeah. or it's just his house. So, in other words, he's a prince. There's no explanation about oh. that. So he's a member of the monarchy. Yeah. So does that mean he was born into money? So he doesn't need to do anything apart from press-ups and chin-ups. Yes, but, I mean, this also suggests that there is a king somewhere who lives in a palace. So Castle Grayskull is really sort of like... Um, it's a holiday he, let. Well, it's more like sort of... Not, it's like Sandringham or something, isn't it? Or where did, where did Prince Charles live before he became king? Oh, um, yeah. yeah, it would be like that, wouldn't it? It's um, it's that. It's what's the place in Scotland? What was the queen? Um, the, what's the queen's favourite? Or the Balmoral? That's right. So Castle Greyskull is Balmoral. The king is off somewhere in the capital city. So, or is in fact Greyskull is a principality? 
and he is the highest ranking royal. It's a very small principality. It's a bit like... Uh, like Monaco. Yeah, or even smaller. Yeah, oh. it's... Um, I was thinking Port Merion. Yeah, no, that's so. not a principality. <laughs> just a town, <laughs> a village, probably. It is a village, not, not a town at all. <laughs> Anyone wandering around Port Merion claiming to be the prince of Port Merion is clearly uh, needs to be lying. <laughs> yeah, it's just yes, it needs to be investigated. I um, my favourite part of all this, apart from the fact that he lives in a castle and he's friends with a ghost. Is the yes. fact that um, he the used used the, the the word fabulous fabulous yeah. secret powers were revealed to me the day I held yeah. aloft my magic sword. Can you imagine how many sort of like cans of Thatchers you would have had to have had before you start <laughs> throwing a sword around in your back garden of your castle, and then just reach it up and it glints off the sort of moon or the sun, depending on what time of day you're doing this, and you just shout, "I have the power." It would just be amazing. I mean, it must have scared the shit out of him the first time it happened. Yeah. Because he wasn't expecting it. No. The first time I held my sword aloft, just, I was just dicking about, pretending to be a ninja in the back garden. And then, <laughs> oh, my God, I've got the power. Yeah. Christ, the cat's become massive as well. <laughs> it, it must have been a very frightening experience first time out. <laughs> the cat's become massive. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly um, it. And then there's that. The, I think Man at Arms is the is his mate who's in the full armor with the mustache. Uh-huh. Has um, he got a very? It's like got no neck. Oh, that's Ram Man. Oh, you're thinking sorry. of Ram Man, who I think he- headbutts through walls and doors. <laughs> Is he a we've all, or a we've all got a mate who's a ram man. Um, yeah, well, that's the thing. Basically, uh, what, what Adam slash He-Man has got is just a bunch of misfits from his gym. <laughs> Some necklace buffoon <laughs> who headbutts walls because he's, like, he's taken too many punches to the face in the boxing ring. <laughs> and then, I can't, what does man at arms look like? Hang on, I'm going to have to look this up. <laughs> I can't believe you're looking He-Man. at He-Man. You're listening to Britain's number one car podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. He's got a moustache. <laughs> He's got a moustache. But do you know what he looks a little bit like? Nigel Mansell. Yes. It's exactly who it is. <laughs> he does. I think, imagine <laughs> Nigel Mansell. In- <laughs> Mansell at arms. <laughs> <laughs> I think he looks like Nigel Mansell in futuristic armour. He does. Yeah. He's got the eyebrows. Yeah, it's just incredible. Why did we not notice this in the 80s? Well, he's a bit... He's kind of like Nigel Mansell meets Tom Selleck, I think. Oh, Selleck in, in, in full armour. There's a good one. There's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Magnum at arms. So he goes around solving crimes on Hawaii, but also he's mates with... He man, do you know the thing I was uh, think of for some reason? You know, when your brain sort of conflates things, but I, I, th- you know, at the castle or by the power of Grey Skull, I always think of by the power of Grey Paul, the Ferrari dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Grey Paul, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't live that far away from Grey Paul. I don't know whether that whether that particular Ferrari franchise confers any powers on anybody, but um, but but it feels like it fits the same. Well, they're a re- they're a reputable you know. uh, they're a reputable dealer. But what about if Grey Paul, um, who's he, who he's called day to day? Um, what about if I don't know another warranty issue arises with a with a with a Ferrari, and he's like, oh FFS, and then just becomes <laughs> Skeletor out of just rage, warranty rage. <laughs> Now, I'm just trying to... I think, like you, I didn't really watch He-Man. I sort of have this memory that I I was aware of it, that perhaps my brother, being younger than me, would watch it when we got home from school, but I wasn't interested Yeah, so much. No. So I can't really remember. You know, if I was sitting here now with a blank page and I said, you've got to write an episode of He-Man. Right, right, oh, okay, goodness, so that's he's minding his own business at Castle Greypool, just, you know, <laughs> like, valeting a, 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 an immaculate 458. And, he's um, just ordered an MC-12. Um, yeah. He found that there was a delivery mileage one that was, I don't know, ordered by another crooked prince, and he just, he's had it off yeah. him, and he's had yeah. it shipped in. But then, and then Skeletor just turns up being a prick, <laughs> and he's got to do the sword in the air, power thing, cat becomes massive, and then has a scrap with Skeletor. I mean, what... I don't know the fine detail. Why was Skeletor always being a dick? And I, what was his ultimate aim? Just to annex Castle Greypool because he always fancied having a Ferrari franchise. That's, that's true. Actually, what, what would he have done if he'd got 
Castle Grayskull. You just sit in it and go, there, it's mine. <laughs> it's probably one of those things, isn't it? You know when you really want something for ages and then you finally get it? It's like when you're a kid and then you sort of go, eh. Oh, it's the thrill of the now. chase, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Always. It's sometimes so, like that with cars. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that the thing that, from memory, I think the thing that troubled me about Skeletor was not the fact that he had no face. It's just a moving jawline and a skull. It's the fact that the yes. rest of his body, he's absolutely ripped. I think he's a member of a rival gym. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And that yeah. made me think, so pre-Fast and Furious, really, mm. the Mark IV Supra was the preserve of the the, the weight training enthusiast, should we say. <laughs> Oh, that's that's how it that's how it was. In, so I think Skeletor is is you know I'm yes. yes yes Skeletor anyway, go on. is the guy is the guy with the very unprogressive <clears throat> nitrous assisted Mark IV Supra. That's what Skeletor is. He's the guy who's who's goes just constantly saying he's got eight or nine hundred horsepower, possibly a thousand. Um but hasn't spent any money on the internals of the engine. He's just he's just nossing the shit out of it. And, oh, yeah. And because it's a 2JZ, it'll take it. I was going to say, he's doing the old... It's 2JZ, mate. It can take it. Yeah. Stock internals, mate. Stock yeah, internals. It, yeah. yeah, so Skeletor yeah. is stock internals, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> he's had <laughs> some head work. Of stock internals. There's <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot of white smoke coming out there. No, there isn't. <laughs> it can take it. <laughs> Castle grey smoke. That's like, oh yeah, it's, oh, that's the beginnings of a head gasket. That is. As long as I don't use full throttle, it's fine. <laughs> okay, wasn't expecting to start with in-depth discussion about He-Man, but I just had to get it off my well, chest. Well, in fairness, you you started it. You did just bring this up apropos of nothing. Why were you watching the intro to He-Man? It was on um, a radio. It was on a radio um, documentary. I think about about th- strange things from the eighties. You know, like childhood, and they were talking about how successful, how successful the um, the cartoon was in in so ah. many other countries. And they played the theme tune, and then I was like, oh, I need to visit that because I forgot that Shira was on as well. Mm. So you had mm. He Man. I mean terrible names, really thoughtless. Mm. He Man, She Ra. Seriously? Mm. He I mean, Man, She Woman. Well quite. If you and I pitch yeah. this if you and I pitch this today as a cartoon, mm. they'd say, So what does what does what does He Man slash Adam look like? Well, he's pretty much got women. <laughs> he's, got a bo- he's got a bouncy bob. So yeah. he's got sixties women's hair. He's got a <laughs> It's just basically, you know, Lulu in the sixties. Well, <laughs> like that, like but that. he's a bodybuilder, very quan, and he's wearing very, very sheepskin lined wrestling pants. I would say that's yeah. the closest. Yeah, I mean, it just it's it would never float, would it? It would never float. No. Oh, and he's got a cat, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, don't worry, it's fine. It can he's, get um, really aggressive. Yeah, when he holds his sword, he's just. Oh. He feeds it exclusively on those really dense protein bars you can buy at petrol stations, and so it's become enormous <laughs> and frightening on demand. Yeah, um, and that's about it, really. And there's a, there's a talking skeleton who's always been a prick to him, <laughs> trying to nick his house. No, um, yeah, we'll pass. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> How did they... I mean, I bet they made... As they often do with these things. Let's have a look at this. How many episodes of He-Man did they make? I bet they made... I'm probably made out three, but we just don't know. I'm always in awe of these people who can create long-running series on generally a pretty flimsy premise. Yeah. I can't... uh, It doesn't say that. Uh, Yeah. Well, don't 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 worry. Don't worry. Uh, I'll, I'll move on. Okay. Cosplay. Right. Ah. Okay. I realised this morning while I was making mm. a cup of coffee, which is next to me in a Smith & Sniff mm. cup. Mm. Seamless merchandise promotion. Available from our merch shop. Indeed. Um, I used to think that cosplay was something to do with Cosworth. Because... <laughs> 
because I didn't what? know what the cos stood for in cosplay. So I just assumed, up until then, my world was cars. And I just assumed it was Cosworth related. So I thought cosplay was just dicking around with either DF <laughs> Formula One engines or Escorts or Sierras. That was it. Um, sorry to just go back to He-Man, but I found the answer. So there's been various He-Man cartoons, it turns out. But the one we're thinking of is the original early 80s one, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, it was mm. actually called. There were two series of it, only two series. What? But but a total of 130 episodes. Oh, my gosh. A hundred and... Th- nuts. I know. What? So this is one of these ones. As far as I can work out, He-Man is one of these ones, and I think there's other examples of this, where they basically created the toys and the series kind of simultaneously. Mattel released the original He-Man action figure in 1982. The franchise backstory was developed by the Filmation Animation Studio. So I wasn't too um, old for it. I just wasn't interested in it. Maybe you just thought it was toss. Maybe you just went, I don't want to see this man with Lulu's hair and his <laughs> roid stuffed body running about while the skeleton's generally a nuisance to him. But the it's skeleton, strangely, got no skin or muscle on its face, but it does have a six pack and massive arms. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's it's going on with the protein one. distribution on the ore body? <laughs> 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 It's just oh, too gosh. much. It's too confusing, even for when I was five or six or whatever I was, when I first understood what the hell was going on with Castle Grayskull. Um, um, were you were you uh, cosplay? Did cosplay come to mind because it was uh, we just had the Goodwood revival just the past weekend? Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, and that's a. I mean, that's basically a big cosplay event, isn't it? Yeah, it has become that. It's become the 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 outfits and the the attention to detail has become as important as the motor racing. I was thinking about. I didn't go to the revival, but I was thinking about people there because it was that weekend was very muggy and hot. It was, and I thought this is a bad time to be wearing tweed. Uh, if you were going to wear a second world war brigadier outfit i would say not a great idea that weekend no because that'll be what based. thick wool <laughs> yeah itchy woolen clothes no. that'll be one of those it's, ones where you've drunk eight pints of water that day and not one wee not one no or just 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 a sort of, a sort of solid worm of onyx comes out um <laughs> I we uh, my wife and I had a, a, a grown ups afternoon out. Just the two of us. We someone was looking after our kids on that Saturday of the revival, and it was extremely hot here as well. And there was a Jane Austen festival in Bath slash Bath, and so there were lots of people wandering around in extremely big dresses and men in top hats, and again lots of heavy woolen items and they all looked absolutely boiling that's a terrible uh, timing for a jane austen event isn't it yes and also as a mate of mine who lives here pointed out jane austen hated bath so it's a bit weird that they celebrate her did she? she yeah i don't know i'll be honest i've never read any jane austen but <laughs> uh, but, but my mate th- th- tells me that uh all of the dickhead characters in her books come from Bath, which gives an indication of how much she didn't like the place. And she didn't live here very long either. But somehow she's become inextricably linked to it. And um, and so they have a festival to celebrate. Someone's not done their homework. So- no, well, I think they just gloss over it because it's good for tourism. But, um, you know, it's, it's, there's, it's I don't think th- this happens a bit, doesn't it? I think there's other examples of people being sort of, you know, places celebrating their most famous occupant, and actually that person hated it. And I, um, I can't remember who they. Well, Philip Larkin, maybe. This is the first time. I think the first time in could be fifteen years that I've not been to the Goodwood Earth Eyeball. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't go this year either. Um, not because I didn't want to or anything like that, but I, I ended up going and taking my son and my um, my nephew to Santa Pod Raceway. For oh, that, for yes, the big one. You were sent, same weekend. You were sending me those pictures. I was sending you those pictures of the FIA European Finals, and it was, of course, boiling hot. But mm. my oh my, what fun we had! Sticky on the strip then. Extremely the sticky on the strip. So actually, quite difficult racing conditions because the ground is 
really hot and tacky, but also the ambient air is probably too hot for for engines oh, to run. They prefer to yeah. run it run it in the evening on a day like that. Mm. So you get a little bit of cold air through the the intakes. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, an awful lot of fun. They were running um, all from all over Europe, top top fuel guys, and um, I say guys, most of the top top fuel dragster drivers are female. Um, in fact, I think it's got the highest proportion of female drivers at, at um, um, kind of pro level uh, in motorsport. Really? Yeah, which is really good. And of course, the women and the men compete on a on an even playing field. There's no like women's mm. racing than men's racing, like it would be in athletics mm. or whatever. So um, yeah, it was really good. And but I did we did experience some some key um, f- elements of going to a Santa Pod base festival. <laughs> I forgot there's a term called pod face. Pod face. And I'd actually forgotten. Some people mentioned it to me on, on, on social media. Have you seen many pod faces yet? Pod face is when on a hot weekend at Santa Pod, because it's an, mm. a, an old um, World War um, bomber airstrip, it's, yeah. um, it's a dust bowl. It's an absolute no. dust bowl. And there are, some, yeah. uh, there are still in this world... Uh, sun cream refusers out there yes so you have a combination of blisteringly hot lots of dust about and also sunburn uh then you couple that with a huge enthusiasm for day drinking um, oh gosh yes the most extreme of which i saw two guys in singlet vests sitting on um well, they weren't table and chairs. They were uh, one of them was a stack of tires, and the other one was uh, you know like a, a, a toolbox with yeah. a sort of makeshift table. They were eating yeah. what looked like a very very sort of sloppy omelette in the morning. This was oh. eight, I know this was eight in the morning because that's why I was <clears> going to get a coffee and I noticed them. They were both yep. eating a very sloppy omelette mm. and a can of Stella Artois each. Oh, <sighs> yes champion's breakfast but for both car watching and people watching it's ace and in fact my daughter's favorite race car called the undertaker which is like a a, 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 it's a it's a top fuel funny car so full-bodied car that is sort of one piece no door opening doors or anything the body kind of hinges down they did this record run which was ace but the a bit of um, a few sparks and fire was coming out of it over the finish line, so they all kind of took it straight to the pits. And well, they they they, they rebuild the top end end of the engine every every run on those cars anyway, which is just mind boggling in itself. So we went round there to watch them beavering away, mm. and my son Wesson was marvelling at the fact they can take the whole engine apart and put it back together for a three hour turnaround, and. Oh. The guy saw him what, what, watching, and he said, um, "Do you want a do you want a souvenir?" Mm. And he said, "Oh, yeah, okay." And he said, "Here you go. Have a have a billet piston that's just run that fastest time that we saw. We were watching it. Uh, have a billet piston. You know that thing's been doing whatever it was fourteen thousand r thirteen thousand rpm. I don't even know. I can't." Mm. And he gave him one of the pistons that was in the car that they said, we've noticed a couple of sort of slight bore scores. We're not going to risk that one. You can have that one. And it's weird how race parts go from being really valuable to being scrap in seconds. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Talking of which, um, our friend, Karen Chanduk, yes. uh, at the Goodwood Revival, seemed to turn a Ferrari 250 GTO into a pirouetting fireball. I don't know how he managed Yes. Bit hairy, that wasn't it? That looked for a really hairy. So sort of went, uh oh. Um, but then all under control, and he, racing driver's head, as the the sort of spare a spare brain capacity where I think I, I certainly I would be shitting my pants. Yeah, he kept it all together, but then immediately got it onto the grass near the marshals, and got that door open so he could get out pronto. He did very very did very well. No and the car harm was saved. done, <clears throat> and the car was saved. Um, Am I right in thinking that 250 GTO is that I don't how do they express this but it is a lot of these people who own these extremely valuable old Ferraris and other cars yeah essentially 
they want to keep them for best because they're worth many tens of millions of pounds. Yes. So they have an exact replica made. Yeah. That's what goes racing. I think it's a, a sort of a, a, an agreement between these people that if you own the original, same, mm. as, same as a painting, I suppose, if you own the original, you're allowed to make an accurate replica of a clone um, mm. because you own the original and you're not doing it for monetary gain. You're doing it because you just want to bring one out in a public place and the other one probably stays locked away in a vault. Yeah. But uh, there's there's a lot of argument about what which ones are the real deal racing at Goodwood and which ones aren't. Yeah. And this is where it gets I can't I can't quite get my head around this or work out how I feel about it because I sort of understand it. It is the keep it for best kind of mentality. But at the same time, by building a replica that you are not so precious about, you can then give it to someone like Karun and say, have at it, my friend. Yeah. Drive it as hard and as fast as you like. And that leads to good racing. I think so I kind of like and appreciate that. But there's something, I don't know, at the same time, it feels off. It's a bit of an odd one. Replicate. I think that's why the racing has got faster and more aggressive. Mm. And for spectators like us, m- more entertaining because mm. you are watching cars being pushed hard, and the cars are suspiciously faster than they ever were in period. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you look at the Mini Coopers and you go, "There's no way a Mini Cooper was doing that in the mid '60s." No flipping way. No, <laughs> no I don't, they're sort of doing like off the line. They're doing naught to sixty in four point. Yeah, they're like seconds. a Civic You're Type like, R. I like, don't like, remember, <clears throat> but yeah. So I, I am not an authority on this. And I don't know which ones are real and which ones aren't. There are people, some, some say that there are certain owners who refuse to, to fake it. They just, they race the real deal and they live with the consequences. And everything's rebuildable if you've got the money mm. and the time. But Well, it feels like a lot of these cars are kind of trigger's broom anyway, aren't they? Because they've had checkered racing histories and, in, you know, in some cases have been basically written off. Yeah. And then the chassis plate has been applied to, I suppose, effectively a brand new car. But yeah, uh, but as long as it's been done, it's been it's been done through an official. You know, if, if, if Ferrari took a car back and rebuilt it from, a, 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 um, you know, a, a dustpan and brush worth of of, of two hundred and fifty mm. GTO, but because Ferrari have done it, it's okay. Yeah, I think I, 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 that's, I, yeah, I think I'm kind of all right with it as long as people are. Tra- I think it's when people aren't transparent that I start to get a bit cross. Yes, I suppose so. And I suppose if, say, the owner, I, I don't know for sure, but I think I believe that that 250 GTO that Karun had the incident in is a you know sort of perfect facsimile of the 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 original is safely locked away. Mm. Um, and I I suppose if the owner of any of these cars decided to sell they sell the replica if one exists with it yes sort of like you might sell an expensive watch with a spare strap or something you i just think they just I comes th- with it. i think they're inseparable because mm. one of them's got all the ra- one of them's got the racing accolades early in its career and the other one has racing accolades latterly in its career so mm. they're kind of in- they are inseparable I suppose this is the bit that trips me up, sort of morally or philosophically, is that they will sort of just claim, you know, they'll often go, well, of course, that Ferrari DGJ471, and they'll quote the registration. And the registration, of course, is applied to both cars, because I guess they don't actually use them on the road. So it leads you to think it's the same car, but it's not. It's almost like the car has a stuntman that does the tricky bits these days. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, Talking of which, I was alerted... By um, it was Tavarish actually the chap who uh, the YouTuber with the, the broken. I enjoyed P1. your chat with him. Oh, thanks. I'm glad what you an did. affable chat. He's he a really is. yeah. He's a, he's a decent guy. Honestly, I mean, very impressed with what he, what he's doing. He he was the one we over a curry. We were just he just decided to to chat about Steven Seagal, and we were talking about the fact that nowadays <laughs> he mostly does fighting from sitting on a chair, and I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop it's laughing. True. I just couldn't stop laughing. I was like, "What? You can't do fight scenes from a chair." <laughs> right, you can try. <laughs> Is this like? But it's. I went to see Brian Ferry in concert um, only about five or six years ago, and he was great. 
but you realise that he is uh, an older man and he'd carefully formatted the set list so that he had plenty of opportunities to sit down and do songs from behind the keyboard. So he'd do a standing up one and then he'd just go and sit down for a couple of numbers and then he'd stand up again. And I was like, I see what you're doing here. And when he was standing up sometimes, he'd get to the front of the stage and he'd look like he was sort of bending down to do a bit of crooning. But I noticed he'd got his hand sort of on his on his thigh. And oh, a bit what, of a kind of... Oh, what a bit of back. Just, yeah, he just looked like he was going, oh, more than this. Ah, my bloody back. And um, But he, he, he disguised it well. But I think it's probably the same thing as Steven Seagal. He's just gone, all right, there's six fight scenes in this movie. I'll need to do four of them from a chair. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I'll be ruined. <laughs> I just can't just... believe Seagal fighting from a chair. And then, if you see any stood up Seagal fighting, it's not Seagal. It's a dog. Oh, yeah. Like um, the Bond film View to a Kill, Roger Moore's last Bond film. And at that point, you know, Rog was getting on a bit, bless him. And the. I know what the, you're going to say. There's a scene where he runs up the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> it's the Eiffel Tower, isn't it, with the leather jacket <laughs> yeah. on? <laughs> I think. I, see, I think he's got a dinner suit on. Oh, has he? Yeah, but or I maybe has, know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe has. I thought but in the, the wide the shots, on. it's very plainly a twenty-five-year-old stunt man who's absolutely legging it up the stairs, and then they come to the close-ups, and it's poor old Roger Moore, sort of huffing his way up three steps because he's not really, you know. In um, in such fine fettle, I can't I can't say view to a kill without without thinking view the, the the that Japanese import oh, which you talked about. Mitsuoka view to a kill. It's the same as that Gladys Knight and the Gladys Knight and the Pips song, which I was listening to the other week, wasn't I? Um, um, license to kill. License to kilt. It's kilt. Yeah. She, she they act the backing singers actually go. T- <laughs> you listen to it now. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. Got a license to kill. T- ah. And you know, I had ride on time on the radio the other day, and I, 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 I ever since I found out that the, it's 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 right on time. The sample they use is you're right on time. Ooh. But the Italian producers who put that record together didn't realise that, and they just heard it as Ride on Time because English wasn't their first language. So they called the record Ride on Time because they thought that's what she was saying, and it's not. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> and you think, actually, Ride on Time doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's sort of, you just accept it. Of course it doesn't that song make sense. It's huge. a dance track. It doesn't make any sense. I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. But it's but that Ride on Time makes perfect sense <laughs> you go, oh wait no, it's too late now i've had the sleeves riding painted. on the time riding on the time <sighs> um tenuous link but uh, I, I wanted to uh, read out this email from a listener oh uh, luke thorne hello luke um he says hello richard and johnny a friend of ours recently bought a very tidy range rover l322 td v8 nice he took it along to a local car meet and we were all surprised to hear he only paid 10 grand for it We all walked off imagining what kind of mechanical slash electrical horrors he would soon encounter. However, after a couple of days, a link to a certain website started passing around the various friendship groups of this person. It turns out the Range Rover used to belong to a mature adult actress by the name of Lady Sonia. Not only that, but the Range Rover features heavily in one of her productions. No. With a large amount of action taking place from the driver's seat. Also, some from the rear bumper. However, one person pointed out she missed a trick as she didn't fold down the rear tailgate. That does seem like missing a trick. That is a total trick, miss. Yes. He says, I would provide a link, but a simple Google entry of her name and Range Rover soon delivers the results. Well, I'll leave <laughs> listeners to um, do that. We won't be putting a link on the Patreon or anywhere else. Can anyway, I hang on? I'm just writing it down. If you seem so inclined. What's her name? Um, What's her name again? I can't remember. <laughs> Lady Sonia. Lady um, Sonia. Luke says it just seems so funny as we all commented on how clean it was inside. <laughs> I presume it had been aggressively valid. It also driver's seat. Like I mean, th- probably the least practical of all the seats in which to do what a a lady like that would would, would do on camera. Um, 
Amazing. Anyway, the fact that there was I'd no say, use, no no usage of the the twin tailgate is is almost. Which you just think, I mean, that's got to be a Range Rover's USP if you want to, you know, for a number yeah. of practical reasons, but including um, the making of. Can we? Um, I'm going to graphic film. I'm going to email Lady Sonia, and I'm going to point that out. But I will also <laughs> say, just remember, the Honda Element also has a split tailgate, so. If, yeah, but she wouldn't use it. She's clearly she probably wouldn't use the unique door arrangement of the elements either. Um, I bet she likes those aftermarket off-roader bumpers. You know, the ARB and the um, Hannibal. I think Hannibal is like a an adventure off-roady person's. Um, oh right, okay. Do you know the one I mean? Yes, I think They're so. a metal bumper, a, a much larger metal ledge of a bumper. I bet she'd mm. like one of those. Um, can I also just say a quick thank you to Tim Dowdle, another listener, who's the one who had the picture of the Brexit MGF, MGTF, sorry, that we, we mentioned last week, um, which I think he put on Twitter last week, but I will put this on the Patreon because we didn't. Uh, in fact, Tim is a patron. I know this because he's on there talking about this. But yeah, the, the Brexit MGTF, we now have the photographic evidence. Oh, I'll stick it on the Patreon this week. Brilliant. So that's lovely. Thank you, Tim, for sending that in. Um, also, a few listeners have pointed out that um, Calvin Harris has got a sweet prelude. What? Uh, on the uh, on, on the cover, or for the, some of the promo photos for his uh, new song with Sam Smith. You're joking? Is that yeah, true? And it's, uh, yeah, but it's but it's sort of it's weird. The the picture it's it, it's I presume hanging from a crane. I don't know whether it's meant to look like it's falling from the sky. I haven't really. Um, I did not. Have this, I haven't. The song's called Desire, and um, it's actually for sale. Uh, weirdly, it's, a, it's a, like modified. Mark Emerton was one of the listeners who sent actually sent the Facebook Marketplace link uh, for the car. Uh, it's it's nineteen ninety three Honda Prelude, um, and I presume the record company have ever done this because it's got the song's called Desire, and it's got Desire graphics up the side of it. It's an orange and black, and oh. it's got a rear wing, but it's hung from a crane dangling behind calvin harris and sam smith who are wearing fetching track suits i need to see reason. well th- this i need it's to really, see also i appreciate I mean, this, this is we've got to be deliberate but the background the, the car is just they're standing on some waste ground with sort of sundry kind of functional corrugated metal buildings and some rubble behind them it's and some like machinery and shit it's an absolutely cock awful messy backdrop but i suppose it's deliberate um the description says, for sale is the Honda Prelude hung up for the cover of the latest Calvin Harris and Sam Smith song, Desire. The car is a 2.2 manual, runs and drives, was probably drained of all fluids before being hung up. Is currently running and driving, but failed its MOT on mainly some rust patches in the rear arches, That's but is quite solid apart from those areas. Open to offers. Believe you. Yeah, but it is a 2.2. So I don't, I'm looking at this. Listen, if I didn't already have like maybe one, no, I got three preludes. If I didn't already have three, (laughs) I'd go out and say Calvin. 6.6 in total, yeah. Like DM him. I'd like, oh, Calvin, listen, yeah, I know you're busy and all that shit. You're going around to like Vegas and like uh, Ibiza, all that shit. But can I come around at like, I don't know, like tomorrow at like five, have a look at it? If it's half decent, I'll put a deposit down, I'll come and get it, modify it, yeah. You know, I said to you, I find it weird that every time I I get sent a link for a car on Facebook Marketplace, I then scroll down and it suggests other things I might be interested in. It's always a few cars, usually a laptop for some reason, and then a lady's dress but you, the lady is in the dress and it's sort of quite it's often quite provocative and you know? yeah yes and, and, and you pointed out this is because facebook marketplace is now where um transactions it's fall. modern prostitutes oh uh, yeah it's a modern and I prostitute very naive for not knowing this and then i i clicked on it wasn't a dress actually because i got served a load of fiat pandas and a, a shot of a lady's leg in suspenders oh great and for research purposes, I clicked on it, thinking, "I bet they're not selling suspenders." I love and that. Sure enough, in the in the in the text, it makes it clear that other things are available. Um, I love the f- and, oh, yeah. oh, it made it clear, so it wasn't even it wasn't, it wasn't well. I mean, not clear, not as in you know explicit, but definitely it hinted at the, what was going if on. If you wanted more. some more of this, you probably could get it. Yes, maybe. Yeah, and yeah, and I had no idea. And then uh, last week. There was an article somewhere that I read that um, that said Facebook Marketplace is 
the new hot place for not only uh, people offering services like that, but selling all sorts of illicit things. Drugs is a big one. Um, nobody Apparently goes. So. Nobody goes and like. Nobody like has a dealer on standby anymore on on the, and they don't text people. It all just gets mail ordered. A bit like people who can't be bothered to go to supermarkets anymore, and it all gets delivered to your your door in those little stackable, lovely plastic things. I must steal some of those from my garage. Actually, I keep thinking about that just to rearrange your garage. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, Facebook. I don't, I don't, I don't go on Facebook Marketplace. I'm told it's brilliant, but I don't go on it. I think it's well, no, I do, it's but it's odd. You get sent quite a lot of links to cars for sale, and it's sort of it's a thing that. And what I then I was looking for something. Oh yeah, we I, I, we want to buy a sort of second hand like key, piano keyboard for our kids to learn piano, and so I thought oh, I'll look on Facebook Marketplace. Mm. And even when you go on Facebook, it's quite hard to find Marketplace. You think they'd make more of it. It's sort of hidden in a sidebar, but there's absolutely shit ton of stuff on there. And of course, you know, you can tell it is your location and it tells you, you know, piano keyboards fit pandas and prostitutes in your area, oh. which saves you having to travel much. Did you go keytar nice. or not? I, I wanted to, but unfortunately, the piano teachers thought that was impractical. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to shout out a thank you to a chap that runs a Land Rover Defender aftermarket business. Um, oh. A chap called Kevin at Mud, Mud Stuff, Mud-UK Limited, up mm. in Hebden Bridge. I want to say thank you to Kev. He actually, he's a, he's a, he's a Smith & Sniff subscriber. But he actually, mm. he knew that I was looking for some, um, looking for some half-decent aftermarket speakers and gear for my insight. And despite the fact oh. that he does Defender stuff, he does single, yeah. singled-in head units. Because a lot of, as you know, Rich, because you're, you bought the last of the Defenders, which didn't even come with the radio, which didn't still makes me stereo. laugh. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. paid more for the last of the off the line. It doesn't come <laughs> with anything. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he said, oh, I, I can supply some of that. And he has. And he's, he's been really lovely. Oh. So I thought, and he turned up at a, we, we rendezvoused at a barn find up in Wigan last week. Yeah. And he turned up in such a sweet, sweet example of the Mark um, Defender, which had a pop-top uh, camper conversion. Oh. It looked really neat, I have to say. Okay. Like a sort of expedition camper. Yeah, yeah. And he says it's not all for show. He's shipped his car all over Canada and America and all sorts. He's done loads oh. of really cool stuff for that. So oh. I just want to say thank okay. you to Kevin. And yeah. uh, and and I thought it was ironic that the person that doesn't have any Land Rover products has ordered some parts from the aftermarket Land Rover guy, but <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, there was one bit of other sorry, I listener business. Uh, a few people uh, among them, Andrew McRae and uh, Nathan Rogers, sent us a screen grab from uh, the Louis for Theroux documentary Raps New Frontier in which you briefly see um, another candidate for our Jaguar Rescue Centre. Oh, gosh. Um, it's a, but it's, it's also pertinent to what we were talking about last week because it's, it's an XF donk. Seriously? Yeah, it's a pink XF on huge wheels just on someone's driveway, and it's just a brief sort of shot of it um, in this show, which both Nathan and Andrew and some other people, I think, on the socials, um, they uh, they just grabbed it for us to see. Um, Andrew also notes that you know Louis Theroux did that song when he did he covered the the rap industry. He did that jiggle jiggle song, which then sort of went mad on TikTok, didn't again. it? Because my kids yeah. knew it and they couldn't understand how I knew it. Yes, really. Yes, <laughs> um, and famously, Louis Theroux references his Fiat. Yes, in it. And, um, you need to see it. Andrew says, it drives me absolutely crazy when I see the song cover picture, which is a cartoon of Louis Theroux and the two rap artists he did the song with. But they're in a car, and as Andrew points out, it's clearly a Mark III Fiesta RS Turbo. And he's right, it is. It's a, It's got the those quad fogs on the front bumper, but then it's got the three spokes, so you know it's the Turbo and not an XR2i. Right, well, that's... Is that's it? out of order. It is. Andrew says, rightly, I think, how hard would it have been for the graphic designer to draw a 1995 Punto 1.1? 1. 1? 
Or better still, a Panda 100 horse. Or a Sporting, a, 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 a Punto Sporting. Yeah, yeah. Spo- spouting. Yeah. Spouting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, get your act together. Well, I know someone that knows Louis through. I Sadly, I don't know him. I'm going to make you. You, you love him, Louis through, don't you? You've got a bit of a man crush on I, I have a huge Theroux. amount of time and admiration for, for Theroux. Always have done, since his really early stuff, his weird weekends. Mm. Yeah, he was what he was really quite an inspiring character for me, and I've always wanted to kind of t- do his stuff as like car based, like he- emulate him in the car world, really. I mm. suppose, but haven't succeeded yet. So there's still time. There's still plenty of time. Well, I mean, I don't. It just depends what which bit you're trying to emulate. Yeah, you, you not the going go to and prison see bit. people with weird cars, and yeah, <laughs> but, ideally, <laughs> it was that. I can't remember who I heard a comedian doing a really good impression of Louis III because what they they nailed this when he does that quite soft voice and he goes, "Have I upset you somehow? <laughs> Are you annoyed with me?" <laughs> I've heard he's very nice. I know someone who used to work with him and he's very nice, very professional. Louis, I know you listen to this show. Actually, I don't. I'm just lying. Um, but can you contact us? It's um, it's 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 hello at smithandsniff dot com. Yeah, if oh, that like applies to, to anyone else who's not Louis through. If you've got something you want to say to us, hello at smithandsniff.com. Yeah. Yeah, particularly didn't... through, is, are we adding Louis through to our list of people for whom we will waive our no guests rule? Oh, shit, yes. Yes. Okay, so yeah. it's now, I forget. Uh, Lewis Hamilton's on there. Yes. Your dad. My dad. Louis Theroux. Yeah. And I think somebody messaged the other day and said that... Um, when we mentioned our, our guest waiver list, we forgot Sade. Oh, bugger. Of course, well, she was the original, was, wasn't she? Yeah, I think she probably was. I mean, if yeah. we could get Sade to sing a Smith & Sniff theme tune, even just to, to <laughs> 10 seconds, just a little 10-second <laughs> sizzle, would just be the most wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, sweet, lovely, yeah. wickedly talented... <laughs> Uh, empowering songs. Um, I, um, <laughs> can I do no, some practical no. car news, just really quickly? Practical yes, yeah. car-related news. I've been doing a lot of night yeah. driving this week, okay? Yeah. And it's yeah. it's it's reinforced how badly I need to go to the optician. So I've booked an optician oh. appointment so everyone can just come, pipe the hell down. <laughs> but, but I am a rear-view mirror dip refuser. Oh, why? Do you dip the rear view mirror? I have and would if it was required. Yes, I just can't be bothered. I just live. I just live you with can't the dazzle. Be bothered to lift your arm no. a bit. I mean, it's already halfway there. I if know. You've got it on the steering wheel. You're not hanging down by your side. You don't need your hand dangle about by the seatbelt clasp. Do you know what it is? It's because I'm worried that I'll forget to flick it back, and then I'll think I'll, I'll think that I'm driving a van and can't see anything. Or that it's really foggy behind you. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I do, honestly, I don't ever do it ever. Even though I start to gnash my teeth when there's someone with xenon. Prince of Eternia's like properly like firing into the back of the car. I really am. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a refuser of the dip. And I'd like to know if anyone else listening is a is a is a dip a rear view dip refuser. I don't want to sound like a shaft, but I realise that my Range Rover does it automatically. So um, as a lot of cars do these days, don't they? It's quite a nice little feature. You say it does it. I bet the next time you drive it, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> hey i took it for a service and the guy said it was a good one yeah so, he, he um, did he did i remember so that's you know i'm going to take him at his word he's been underneath it more than i have but um uh i the, when you remember i had my jag xjr years ago and that you know that was a what 99 car it was a lovely car a lovely car still is and um the first time I was driving at night when someone came up behind me with the, their slightly bright headlights on, I discovered it not only had an auto-dimming interior mirror, it had auto-dimming door mirrors as well. Blimey neck. That's cool. Slightly, and they worked. That's the most amazing thing. Because it's weird. Because the centre, they had a ring around the edge of the door mirrors that didn't dim. So it stayed sort of normal, clear mirrored glass. And then just the sort of the main, most of it dimmed. So that way you could tell when it had dimmed. But it slightly blew my mind that a car from 99 had it, particularly a Jag, which was, you know, essentially underneath. That car was, well, the fundamentals were designed in the 70s, but I guess 
the electrics were updated in the 90s. I was, I was quite impressed, and they worked, and they were quite good as well. It was quite a nice touch. They didn't go too dark or anything. It's a sweet car. We know this. It is a sweet, sweet car. It's now, now um, of course, safely back in the custody of TV's Richard Hammond. So um, and he's, had it, he's had it all sorted out. He is, yes, isn't he? Um, on the note of housekeeping, just a thank you to all the people who got the gist of my ranting and moaning last week. I After we did that, I was a bit worried that I would... Uh, that people would misunderstand what I was trying to say and that I would look like a twat um, but the thing about synthetic fuels I was really just trying to make the point that they're not a magic bullet that it's going to reverse the current trajectory of the car industry and no. that suddenly we'll just have petrol cars forevermore and it just annoys me when people make out synthetic fuels are sort of going to be some kind of panacea that will cause everything to go back to the way it was that's not going to happen and you know I don't think the future is necessarily bleak and i didn't tell you i drove um uh, briefly drove an ev converted old school defender a few weeks ago ah did you and it was and it was really good yeah because i thought i was like oh you know but sort of the wrestling with the gearbox is part of a defender's appeal but actually it's quite nice you get a lot of the still it still feels like a defender of course it still it wobbles around doesn't it it still wobbles around. It's still bloody noisy because the tyres and the wind noise and stuff. But um, but there's no clattery diesel noise like there is in mine. Um, and it was all quite jolly, and I really liked it. Yeah. And I was also uh, talking to uh, somebody at a company that makes hub motors. Oh. And that is going to be a new frontier of EVs. And the things that they can do with hub motors in terms of handling and ride as well um, are really quite interesting and so it's one of those things that sort of gives you hope. If you like driving, there's this prospect that in the future you can have a car that can, you know, in theory, at the push of a button, it could suddenly handle like a 1970s 911. And then when you're bored of that, it could handle like a K11 Micra. You know, it's just that, that in theory, those are the possibilities because they can do so much. Before we before we start winding things down, uh, yes. and before I tell you that I've, I've bought another car, I was just going to talk yes. about uh, Prince Williams. I've written it down. <laughs> Prince William or Prince Williams? Prince Williams. Wasn't it you that I was having a conversation with um, on WhatsApp? over the last fortnight oh. about people referring to Prince William as Prince Williams and then but, but then we're wondering do they? yeah a, a few people do i mean i think we're in the minority here cuz i certainly don't so is it one of cuz i get slightly wound up by people who who say marxes when they mean marx and spencer it's the marxist it's the marxist spencer marxist spencer <laughs> when they do that. that's what it is <laughs> It's uh, um, yeah. off of Prince Williams. Prince Williams. Prince Williams. Like, um, it, it, <laughs> so people, who, I always, I think this might have been from uh, like a Matt Lucas skit, or maybe I'm getting confused. Was it they did rock profiles? They had Jerry Halliwell kept calling George Michael George Michaels. Yes. George Michaels, um, it's so true. He gets called George Michaels a lot. Cliff Richards gets called Richards yes. a lot. Um, and I always, for some reason, I, I, when I see Damon Hill I, in my head, I always hear a sort of Matt Lucas voice going, ah, oh, it's Damien Hills. <laughs> so so I, Prince Williams So is, Prince Williams, uh, to, my, to my knowledge, uh, he's never been involved in motor racing. Um, but then... If people are calling him Prince Williams, do they think his surname is Williams? Like, you know, yeah, Amy Williams or Frank Williams or something. They just think he's called yeah, he's, Prince it's Frank, Williams. It's Frank Williams' his nephew. That's right. <laughs> that's, ex- that's exactly it. <laughs> but it's exactly it. If you do, you not seen him. Sense. He got told off when he was younger because he would turn up at royal events wearing a very nineties Canon Honda jacket. Yeah. <laughs> And, <laughs> and they'd be like, jackets. "You're supposed to wear suits. What are you doing wearing? What are you, what are you doing, doing wearing Prince Williams? Yeah, F1. Yeah, yeah. So, is it because some people call him Wills, oh, it could which be. is an accepted posh person's way to abbreviate William? It could be. And and then they, so they just assume that his full name must be Williams because of Wills. Williams, Williams is. I've just realised. 
Mm. Is Prince Williams going to just go to the Nigel Mansell auction and just buy loads of stuff? <laughs> because well, he's already got it, hasn't he? Well, if, from, or if he from, didn't, maybe he was told to get rid of some of it in the 2000s and oh. he reluctantly got rid. And then he's gone, do you know yeah. what, bollocks, I'm going to be the king at some point in the not too distant have future. Enough, like. I'm going to buy, yeah. buy the power back. So he's, he's gone through Mansell's, Nigel Mansell's back catalogue and gone, right, I'm having that. Yeah. I'm having that cap. I'm having that jacket. <laughs> you know, that trophy, you're bloody having that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so his, where do they live now? I don't know. High Grove or somewhere. Castle Grayskull. <laughs> it's going to be full of, <laughs> Battle full of Mansell memorabilia. Well, Mansell, of well, course. We've, is, we've looped back to the start here. We have, because. It's almost seamless. Well, because Mansell obviously is actually. He does live in Castle Grayskull because he is Man at Arms. Mansell yeah. at Arms. Yeah. So. <laughs> right, well, on that neat note, it's probably time to pull this into a space. Um, before we go, I have three things to tell you. Uh, one, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. It's called The Bacon Lakes Show, in which he makes scale facsimiles of large bodies of water out of thinly sliced pork products. Um, this week, Coniston water out of MS dry cured smoked rashers. If that's not to your taste there, because you're vegetarian or something, then there's always the late break show. Lots of excellent videos about cars on there. What is your latest tasty treat? <laughs> It's sorry, sorry, it's not a, a, a not a lakey bacon. Um, <laughs> it's this. <laughs> you totally put throw me off my stride. Okay, so the the next video is um, it's actually um, all about Maserati. I ah. I sort of decided to do a little bit of investigation into uh, whether I think Maserati's in the rudest of healths that it's been in for probably forty years, and um, mm. and it's just gone it's, it's just finished its first season in single seater racing um for the first time in 60 years and um i wanted to to do that i had a little drive of the uh, the gran turismo folgore um mm-hmm. and shadowed the the formula e team when they went down to the london e oh, and uh, yes. so yeah. that's that's what the, the videos were oh it, it's quite it's sort of a bit of a it's not quite louis through okay i'm not going to say it's louis through no. um but it's a Maserati overview. Yeah, and if, exactly. And, there's, and if you enjoy just talking about amazing old school Maseratis, there's a couple of mentions of things like the boomerang and the Ghibli, um, mm. which, uh, and the Mirac. Still a car I actually want. I do want a Mirac, I yes. think. Mm, I think it would nice be a, quite car. a cool car to go to cars and coffee type events in because there won't be another one, probably. So yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, I'd love a Mirac. Um, and, and they're not that valuable, I think, still. so I think any of those sort of late 60s or 70s Maseratis, are, an Indy, that's a handsome car. Yeah, that's well. the probably the cheapest. Yeah. yeah. And, fact fans, was the basis for the Rover SD1. Oh, the Indy. Yeah, most people go, oh, it's a four-door Ferrari Daytona. It's not the details were nicked off the Daytona, but the body surfacing, they literally took cardboard sections off an Indy and then applied them to the clay model of the SD1. Well, we, look, we know the, the, sort of the body sculpting. The SD1 was a far more popular car than the Indy. Yes. I mean, I'd like an SD1 as well, I suppose, but I'd love an Indy. I just think they're really nice looking. And it's just something about it as well, you know, having a Maserati. Hmm. I do love, I just, um, I like the badge. I know it's a sad thing to say, but I like the Trident badge. I think it looks great. I also think saying to people you have a Maserati is cooler than saying you have a Ferrari. I agree. I think I agree. I agree. There's, there's two or three, oh, after doing that feature... I just kept. I've been, I've been hawking around the classifieds, thinking, mm, "Is that a terrible, mm. terrible idea about buying a Maserati?" I haven't bought a Maserati. Just <laughs> a by so turbo, you know. a really ratty by turbo. But you have bought a new car. I have. I bought one completely accidentally. It was offered to me. <laughs> I didn't chase it. It chased me, and um, the price was so right that I but just th- had to. I think this is. A bit of a dream car for you, isn't it? It's certainly something you've mentioned wanting this on the podcast more than once, I think, in the past. Yes, true. And now, finally, it, you're 
your wish has come true. Yes, it's it's happened. Now, I'm not saying I've so bought they... the most exquisite example of said mark, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that's half the that's half the uh, the challenge, and isn't it? it well, I cannot wait for this. I was so excited about this. We're not saying what it is because you want to do a big reveal on um, on the late break. I'll do a medium um, size reveal if that's okay. Uh, it might oh, okay. be a grower, not a shower. <laughs> I just okay. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, where are we up to? Second thing I've got to tell you is, oh, we got merchandise, uh, mugs, t-shirts, stickers, they're all there. Um, so go to our merch shop, we'll put some links around the place and, uh, and have at it. And we are hopefully, um, we're going to have some new designs quite soon, including someone asked this week um, if we're still going to do um, car dealer back window stickers, and we are. It's on our list. Hell yeah. We just, um, we just need to get our act together. Um, so uh, watch this space for that. And um, the third thing uh, I've got to tell you, well, um, it's, it's not really a thing to tell you, but just that last week we ended the show with you just ad-libbed that little uh, Jag Vandalism News jingle <laughs> while we were talking. Yeah. And then I was bored and avoiding proper work. So I set it to music and played out the show with it, uh, which some people seem to find confusing and strange or, or amusing. But uh, a couple of people went, you were mentioning ethereal synthesizer music in your chat because you'd seen it in a sub ethereal yeah and they went and they were like well that wasn't very ethereal was it and i, I hadn't really thought if i'd been clever i would have put the two together and made the uh, jag vandalism news song more ethereal so now i have oh you could, you've done another version so i've done another version so we'll play out with that just a one-off just oh because, rich again, I was you've had rampantly avoiding real i was gonna so. say you must have had a busy week <laughs> I was so busy that's the problem so busy and also such a fuckwit that i will do anything to avoid having to knuckle down uh and this is the evidence of that so uh this is uh the jag vandalism news ethereal version and we'll do this all again next week until then goodbye Bye. Jack, 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 Jack,